so far we don't think we need to it may that may become necessary there is whether they go ahead with the hearings or not uh, whether other issues are raised by different people that there's probably a point at which we'll use it right now we think the public debate is playing out about as well as it can why confuse it with I mean, it raises a lot of issues that maybe we didn't have to respond to. We'll you see. had said that if you were going to release the counter report, it was going to focus on obstruction. Here's what the president had to say about that after the Mueller report was released. Right. They're having a good day. I'm having a good day, too. It was called no collusion, no obstruction. But, Mayor, that's not true. Uh, the Mueller report makes it clear, especially on the issue of collusion, that obstruction, I think. obstruction rather that, the, that he's leaving it to Congress and I want to pick up on the report volume 2 page I, 8 I, I, I agree with that I okay. agree that, that well good let me let me, let me put this out of here first the conclusion that Congress may apply the obstruction laws to the president's corrupt exercise of the powers of office accords with our constitutional system of checks and balances and the principle that no person is above the law so Mueller invites Congress to look into this, and the president, in terms of Congress, hasn't been exonerated at all on the issue of obstruction. Well, you never get exonerated. I mean, the, the, the standard, first of all, the thing, one of the main things that infects that report and makes it a warped report, page two, the standard. You do not apply a standard of exoneration to anyone, whether it's a president in an impeachment or, or you can't exonerate. Exoneration means proving a negative. That the law has recognized but he's doing that. more than that. He's well, suggesting wait, that, wait. but sir, but, sir he's doing more than that. Further. He is suggesting okay. that there is a case and evidence that Congress should examine. Well, okay, but let's start with this. The standard he used, his conclusion is, I cannot conclude that the president committed obstruction, but I cannot exonerate him. I understand that your idea happens. that he doesn't have to prove the him innocent as not guilty. It's totally biased, warped view of a prosecutor's role. If prosecutors in America were asked to exonerate you, uh, in about 90% of the cases, they wouldn't be able but, to do but, it. I, I did it for... Uh, but sir, respectfully, basically what he's I saying is... could exonerate somebody. I, I think it should go to Congress. That's what he's saying. Well, I know he did. I mean, you're trying to have a different opinion about that. Here's the different opinion. Number one, if they're going to if they're gonna review his removal power, whether we, they do it as an attempt or a reality, Comey, Mueller, whatever, Real question under Article 2 whether they can do that. The Constitution of the United States gives the Congress a role in appointment, advise and consent. It deliberately doesn't give them a role in removal because they say, go back to the Constitutional Convention, they say that would be too much of an intrusion because if you interfere in a accepting somebody, taking somebody, you can always go find someone else. But if you interfere in removal, you're going to force a president to keep someone he doesn't trust, doesn't but, like. But, but, so there's it, a, but that isn't really, wait, so excuse me, that no, isn't, no, no. I mean, with all due respect, that's not the issue here. The issue is, did the president obstruct justice that's or not? Wait, let me, let well, me just ask that, I, I understand you're, under, you're champing at the bit. Let okay. me just ask the question. In June of 2017, right. the Mueller report says that the president called White House counsel Don McGahn twice on the same weekend, and he told him, and this is a quote from McGahn. Call Rod, Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general who is overseeing the special counsel. Call Rod, tell Rod that Mueller has conflicts and can't be the special counsel. McGahn recalled the president telling him Mueller has to go. The only reason that that doesn't happen is because McGahn threatens to resign and refuses to carry out what he considers to be a Saturday night massacre. Okay, now you want my answer? Yes. And you'll let me give it? Sure. Okay, so, number one, had he done it, it would not have been obstruction of justice. Because there were very good reasons to fire Mueller, and the president has the absolute plenary power. Mueller, what was the reason to fire Mueller? Mueller He'd only been in the job a month. M Mueller hired a staff in which he had people that I would find very, very questionable as people that should be investigating Donald Trump. He hired the chief counsel to the Clinton Foundation. Absurd. He hired uh, someone who had been a very, very strong partisan of Hillary Clinton, been at her going away party, whatever that was, and had a history of ethical misconduct, unethical But, but according conduct. to the Mueller report, Can sir. Can I finish, Chris? It's, it, it's, it's a complex answer. You asked a complex question. i got to give a complex answer. I, I mean, there were a lot of reasons why it was... Uh, well, okay, but I, I, I understand one, what you're one, saying is that the investigation was a little faster. Okay. Okay, I know you don't want a long answer, but, you know, in fairness, it, it I, I understand what you're saying is the investigation was biased. 
No, what I'm saying is you could perceive it that way, that would give you a good faith reason to fire him. And also, he demonstrated in the case of Comey that he could fire someone and did not interfere in the investigation because immediately it was taken up by someone else. He told Lester Holt that he realized... Well, sir, I'm not asking about Comey. I'm asking I'm about Mueller. I'm pointing out with his prior conduct, he removed Comey, and he said, I realize it'll lengthen the investigation. And now if he had fired Mueller, he would have expected somebody else came and took it over. The guy had conflicts of interest. The guy hired a highly partisan, biased... It also had come out. It also had come out. I understand you're trying to make the case, but we do have I'm limited time here. I'm not trying to make the case. I'm trying to tell you there's an alternative explanation. There's another alternative which explanation, biased which, prosecutor, which Mueller makes. And Mueller's explanation Mueller, is that two days earlier, the, 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 sir, the report has come out in the paper that now Mueller is investigating him for obstruction of justice and for, for the first time in this investigation, for the first time, the president directly is a target of the investigation. Chris, what you're doing is you're taking the Mueller report, which is a prosecutor's version of what happened. You're giving it full credit, and you're not giving me a chance to explain the other side, which is very, very strong and was left out by the prosecutor. I think that's unfair in a case of this magnitude not to tell the other side. I'm, the, I'm asking you about the other side. I'm, you're I'm not giving I'm, me a chance to answer it. We don't need to talk about James Well, it's Comey. two pages. What? It's two, two or three pages of calumny and lies and distortion. It takes a little while. For example... You think that's what the report is? Calumny, lies, and distortion? In certain respects. Everything that written and attributed to Cohen, half of it's not true. I'm not talking about Cohen. I'm but talking I'm about you asked me, You're asking me, is the report? You say, no, I'm not. Report? I was asking you about, Ma this I was asking about McGann. I think this this was, incident. I think this is a, a, a product of not telling the full story. That's not McGann's fault. McGann gave, when well, you read that, McGann gave three different versions of that conversation. The first version of that conversation is the president used the word fire, and he told the president, I'm going to resign directly. He then recants that and says, no fire, no statement that I was going to resign. Then he comes up with that version, and then a third version, which is even softer, which says something like he should be fired, or, or, or he, he has conflicts. Uh, he can't be special prosecutor. As and and to that Mueller has to go. Okay. Well, he I, interpreted it that way. It's a very complex set of facts. On the other side, the president says, I didn't say to fire him. I didn't, I didn't want him to go. I wanted the conflicts to be taken into consideration. That's the president's version. You've got to pick one version or the other. Okay. But, here's a, here's, all right. May I? But, but in fact, since he can't prove it, he, there's no obstruction. And finally, if he had fired him, there wouldn't have been an obstruction so long as he was replaced by somebody, which he would have been, and there were good reasons, arguable reasons here's the, here's for the, the president question. to do Here's the question. Here's the overview. Why, if, if, the overview is this. No, no, this is really important. The <laughs> president of the United States was an innocent man being charged with something he didn't do. You have to grant that now. When they say no proof of underlying crime, you got to grant that as a legal and factual matter. No, these I things were I, being no, I, done. I, I don't. These things. Well, wait a second. These things were being done by an innocent man. This is this is called an interview. It's not a. Some, it's not your closing argument. You got to give me an opportunity no, to ask you a I'm question. I'm here to defend the president. The, the, I understand that, and I'm here to ask you some questions about it. Distorted arguments you, made by a prosecutor. Your, one of your arguments has been that him. the obstruction of justice can have happened because there was no underlying crime. That's what no. you say. You said that he was being no. framed and he was fighting back. Let's look at what you said, sir. Put it up on the screen. It's kind of ridiculous to uh, go after a man for obstruction <laughs> when he was falsely accused, he was defending himself. His intent in each one of these situations, all 10 of them, is easily explained as an intent to not get framed. But that's what you just said. No, but, I said it a couple of days ago. Okay, I understand, but that's what the point you were making again. The special counsel... I'm not arguing that the special counsel is right and you're wrong. I'm simply presenting the arguments to try to get you to respond to it. Well, yeah. The special counsel <laughs> says that what you just said is not true. Volume 2, page oh, one, 157. Obstruction of justice can be motivated by a desire to protect non-criminal personal interests, to protect against investigations where underlying criminal liability falls into a gray area, or to avoid personal embarrassment. Mueller says the injury to the justice system is just as great. It doesn't matter whether there was an underlying crime. It's still obstruction. Well, when did Mueller become God? Mueller says the injury to the justice system is still as great. There was no injury, by the way. We're talking about an inchoate crime. We're talking about something that didn't happen. There was no obstruction. 
Nothing was denied him. Uh, nobody uh, uh, crushed uh, cell phones like Hillary did. Nobody uh, deleted 33,000 emails like Hillary's people did. And nobody uh, uh, bleached a server like Hillary did. There was no obstruction. They don't point to a single obstruction in their investigation. They went from day one to day end. And they got everything they wanted. Well, that's not true. Well, they're not entitled to testimony. No prosecutor is. Uh that's not a, but that, it, that isn't it, what you said. You said they did. They got everything they wanted. Yeah, but they're not entitled to that. I, that that's now, a different now issue. We're gonna, now we're going to take. That's a different now, issue. Now, now, now we're going to take the uh, the presumption of innocence. We're going to throw it out because it's Donald I'm, Trump. I'm simply now we're saying draw you, you you said that they got everything they well, wanted. You know why he didn't testify? Before them, because they were going to trap him into perjury, like they did with Flynn. Think I'm a fool? I'd have been disbarred if I let him testify. There were so many indications that they wanted to trap him into perjury because they don't have a case that they were not in good faith. Well, here's what they did to Flynn. They call Flynn in, they go to his office, they tell him he doesn't need a lawyer. I got a minute left. And I, well, I, well, I, well, I want I to talk about, I want to talk about This is Trump. worth more than a minute. I want to talk about but Trump. You have to look, you have I to look at the conduct I understand. of the prosecutor. They created There's a, Flynn's crime. There was also the nature. They had the answer that they asked him in there. We're not in talking about Flynn, we're talking we about the president. We are talking about Flynn. Here was the nature. But you're asking me, why did the president not go and stand in front of them and let him try to let them try to trap him into perjury because he had good lawyers and he's not a fool okay if they were fair people i'd have been there in a minute what they did to flynn said to me they're going to try to final do question to my client. here was the nature here was the nature you, you're treating these people as if they're fair they're not they're totally it begins with he's got to prove his innocence then we're throwing out then we're throwing out the fifth amendment well, how many more amendments would we like to throw out in Mueller's thing? I just want to ask you a question. You say that they gave, you gave, the president gave them everything they wanted. I understand you're saying they didn't have a right to testimony. Let's look at the president's testimony. Oh, by the way, if, at if, least, if, no, 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 sir. In the report, at least they say, times, they at say, least 37 times, he said in written answers, he did not recall. Oh, my goodness. Well, wait a minute. You say, oh, well, my goodness. Said 202 times. Okay. Is, Here's what, uh, when Hillary Clinton did that during her investigation I know, about I the email, that. about the report. Here's what the president said. Take a look. Uh, I said a similar. When she was interviewed by the FBI, she claimed she couldn't remember important events 39 times. So if she really didn't remember, that's a problem. And if she did remember, that's a problem. Difference. You got 30 seconds. Yeah, Why is that a different. problem for Hillary Clinton, but it isn't because for Donald Hillary Trump? Hillary Clinton was uh, guilty of the underlying crime. She did crush, she did crush the cell phones. She did. Well, who made you God, God, as you said she, about Mueller? I'm not God about Mueller. I'm just the opposite voice. No, no, no. Voice you're saying that who made God, to, who made Mueller God, that you're, now you're voice. declaring whether she was guilty or not. I'm saying there's a difference between the two. I'm not saying she's guilty or not. There's a difference. The difference is there is overwhelming evidence that she actually obstructed justice. She denied the investigators the information. Nothing was denied to them. And by the way, in the report they say they didn't have to question him because they had the answers to all the questions. Right in the report. So they also said the answers. Right. They also said the answers were inadequate. Oh, I'm sorry. And, and they all. And they also said that to go through a subpoena was going to take up a long they period of time. Truth. I will say if that if my client, if my client has an unclear I, recollection, I'm not going to go stretch out for the prosecutor so the prosecutor can nail him Mayor in an unfair Giuliani. way, like they went after that great general and ruined his life and bankrupted him. They should be ashamed of themselves. Mayor Giuliani, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for.